middle school students and whoever else wants to join. I am going to continue reading from my book, Middle School Master of Disasters. Um, we read up to chapter 14 yesterday. Basically what's happening is there's a group of middle school students who are, they've been searching for treasure. They discovered this notebook in their aunt's basement and it has the cipher code that they've figured out. And so they are headed to um, the desert hoping to find treasure, hoping to find gold. And that's where we're going to start again. So chapter 14. 16 hours later, we landed in Phoenix and hired a driver to get us as far as Apache Junction. From there, we caught a ride with some hikers to the gear store near the Rogers Trough Trailhead in the foothills of Superstition Mountain. Geraldine's journal was too heavy to lug all the way to Arizona, but that was no problem. All we needed were those coordinates and Storm's photographic memory. Her brain would take care of the rest. Now it was time to gear up and go. At the store, we stocked up with a couple shovels, pickaxes, some rope, and plenty of water. You're going to want a satellite-based GPS tracker, too, the lady behind the counter told us, hopefully. Her name was, hi, I'm Lydia. It's okay, Beck said, holding up her phone. I've got GPS right here. Trust me, the lady said, taking out a handheld unit for us. You can't depend on your phone up in those mountains. She's right, Beck, I said. Remember last year in Brazil? And last year in Brazil, obviously, it was chaos. Good point, Beck said. She took the locator from the lady and handed it over to Storm, who usually navigates for us anyway. So I guess we'll just be on our way. Hey, I recognize you people, someone growled while we were waiting to sign out our stuff. When I turned around, there was a man staring at me with his single good eye. The other eye was covered with a black lens in his glasses, like some kind of modern day pirate. And why did I think that the shotgun over his shoulder had something to do with the missing eye? We get a lot of folks sniffing for gold around here, the guy went on, and you're that treasure hunting family. Am I right? Sheriff, you leave those kids alone, Lydia scolded. They're just here for the hiking. Yeah, and I'm here for the water surfing, he, he said, or rather the sheriff said. I hadn't even noticed how the badge over his overalls hung down. Sir, I'm afraid you're mistaken, Tommy said. We're the Bittendorfs, Rolf, Matilda, Celine, and Klaus. That's our usual cover story, especially when we're on the trail of something good. Otherwise, we just end up with a lot of people tracking us while we're tracking the treasure. Maybe it wasn't a great idea to lie to a law enforcement officer like that, but then again, this sheriff looked like bad news. I'm just watching out for you kids, he said. It can get mighty dangerous up there, especially if people think you're here for a reason. A shiny reason that's worth a lot of pesos. But Tommy wasn't backing down. I'm afraid you're mistaken, sir, he said again. Like I already told you, we're the Bittendorfs. That's when someone else screamed, like really loud. Ah! It's Tommy Kid! I can't believe it! I couldn't believe it either. Now we had three girls closing in on my brother fast. You're just as cute in person. I live for your Instagram. Will you sign my backpack? People were really starting to stare. Bittendorf, huh? The sheriff said. So much for our cover story. It was feeling very past time to get out of there. We'll just take our stuff and go, I told Lydia. And she motioned me closer while Beck packed up. Storm put our coordinates into the GPS and Tommy dealt with his fans. You kids watch your backs up there, she whispered. Sheriff Rasher may wear that th tin star of his, but he's greedier than a hungry mouse in a cheese factory. Really, I asked? The sheriff? You betcha, she said. I'm guessing he's going to try to follow you, and I suggest you shake him off quickly. I mean, assuming he's right and you're not just here for the hiking. Then she smiled and winked. I winked back, without admitting anything, but I think we understood each other. The best thing now was to move out as quickly as possible. Come on, I said, as I passed my brother and his groupies. It's time to hit the trail. Chapter 15. Shaking the Tail By the time we reached the official trailhead, we had a whole posse of people pretending not to follow us. Every time I looked back, another one of them was ducking behind a cactus or stopping to tie their shoes or staring at the sky like they weren't just waiting to copy our next move. The only one who wasn't pretending was Sheriff Rasher. He kept his distance, but he also just kept on coming. 
It sent a shiver down my back, even though the temperature was climbing toward 100 degrees. We'll ditch these tourists first chance we get, Tommy said. It's not them I'm worried about, I said, and told my siblings all about what Lydia at the gear store had told me. I think it's the sheriff we really need to keep an eye on. We should worry about all of the above, I think, Beck said. They all look suspicious to me. Then she turned around and snapped a few pictures of the scenery, but I knew she was really documenting everyone's faces just in case. This way, Storm said with an eye on our rented GPS locator. This thing actually works pretty well. Looks like it's going to be steep up ahead, but it's only a couple of miles to Geraldine's hiding place. We went as fast as we could, picking up 500 feet of elevation in the first half hour. We crossed a couple of log bridges and went single file along the edge of a sheer cliff, then through some scrub pine until we came to the mouth of a narrow, twisting canyon. It was blazing hot under the burning sun, with no shade to hide from. All of us had buckets of sweat pouring off us. A bunch of the people following us had dropped off by now, but we still had Sheriff Rasher on our tail. This is where we make our move, Tommy said. As soon as we hit that canyon, we'll be out of sight for at least a minute. When I say go, we're going to climb straight up and out of there. Then poof, we disappear. Sounds like a plan, I thought, but it was too hot to talk. We hiked on a little farther until the notched rocky wall of that canyon had swallowed us up on either side. Okay, 